let's use our definition of matrix column vector multiplication via linear combinations to do the following example, which is to find the vector b equal to a times x, where a is a 1, 2, 3, 4 by 1, 2, 3. So that's a 4 by 3 matrix. Let's go ahead and write that. This is a 4 by 3 matrix. And then x is what we call a 3 by 1 vector. We'll do our quick analysis, which is a habit. A is a 4 by 3. x is a 3 by 1. The inner dimensions must agree. So the inner dimension, the column dimension of A, matches the row dimension of X. So these are conformable by matrix multiplication, matrix vector multiplication. And then we say that the size of the product is going to be defined by the size of the outer dimensions. In this case, it's the row dimension of A and the column dimension of X, right? So let's do a quick recall. One of the first things to do when we're working on an example is actually to remember the definition. If I was taking notes at home, I would try to test myself. This gets into deep learning. One of the best ways to memorize something is to test yourself and then quickly iterate. I'm going to do that. What's the matrix multiplication definition? Take linear combinations of the uh, columns of A scaled by individual entries of the um, vector x, and that's why the inner dimensions must agree. Each column gets one row. Let me go ahead and test that using the actual definition. If we have an m by n matrix, so notice in this case we'll be very specific, m equals 4 and n equals 3. This is a great habit in mathematics to translate the notation of the definition into the notation of the problem. Here we see that n is 3, which is what we wanted. The linear combination version of matrix multiplication is a times x equals x1 times the first column plus x2 times the second column plus da 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 Oh, and I need to fix this in my code, my latex code. That should be xn times the nth column, and that's the vector b. So here, the columns of a, we actually have individual values of them, and then the entries of x, the same thing. So let's go ahead and use that definition to produce here. So using our column... Uh, our linear combination version of the matrix column vector multiplication operation, we see b is equal to a times x. Let's go ahead and analyze these again. We know that this is going to be an m by n. This thing is going to be an n by 1. In this case, we know that m is 4, n is 3. And then in this situation, this would be an m by 1, since the outer dimensions hold that. We saw over here that b is going to be a linear combination of the columns of a where each column gets paired with the associated entry of x remember our paradigm that if we call the left factor so here we have two arguments we have an argument on the left and an argument on the right we're going to call this the modeling matrix that's the one that actually shows up when we create a model and then this is going to be called the algebraic worker so this is the thing that we do to translate modeling matrices into better form. So the idea in linear algebra is that we create a model, we go through the process of creating the matrix, and then that matrix we put into some sort of system, a matrix vector multiplication, linear systems, least squares problem, eigenvalue problem, advanced problem, right? So we fit a model into some problem type, and often the way that we generate the model leaves these things to be not very nice. So Calculating matrix vector multiplication here actually requires a ton of work. Later what we'll see is that we use algebraic workers to transform our modeling matrix into an equivalent problem that is much more algebraically succinct and easy to read off the solution or use code to produce that solution. In this case, when we have the modeling matrix on the left hand side, we're going to partition that into columns. So A is now partitioned into columns. Each column gets matched with the corresponding entry of the vector x. Remember, in this case, we've already said that n is equal to 3. So the top index of my sum turns to 3, since there are three columns in our matrix. And now we can unroll this sum looking at each individual entry. So we'll start at k equal 1. When k is 1, we have x1 times the first column of A. We go next to k equals 2. This is a sum, so we add that. So at k equals 2, this is x2 times the second column of A. And then we add, because this is a sum, x3 times the third column of A, total of three columns. 
we can now actually look at this. Remember, A was a 4 by 3, which means each individual column is going to be a 4 by 1. So this is a 4 by 1, this is a 4 by 1, and this is a 4 by 1. So the output will be a 4 by 1, since this is a linear combination of 4 by 1 vectors. But remember, we're actually given the individual entries of those columns. So check this out. Column 1, A11 is negative 3, A21 is negative 1, A31 is 0, A41 is 2. Same thing over here. We've got 4, 7, 1, negative 5, 4, 7, 1, negative 5. And then over here is negative 3, 6, 2, negative 2, negative 3, 6, 2, negative 2. Each individual column is paired with the in, uh, entries of x. So x1 gets paired with column 1, x2 gets paired with column 2, x3 gets paired with column 3. Now, formally speaking, we have satisfied this definition. We now know that the output a times x is 5 times column 1 plus 2 times column 2 plus 3 times column 3. From the standpoint of the definition, I would actually, I like this, I'm done with the problem. However, we might actually want to calculate what that is. So in order to do that, we bring in the scalar vector multiplication. So 5 times negative 3 is negative 15, 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, 5 times 0 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10. Here we've got 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 7 is 14, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times negative 5 is 10, with a negative, of course. Over here, negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. Negative 2 times negative 4, uh, excuse me, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So now we've done all the scalar multiplications. And I want to go real slow here. I don't want to make a mistake. This is why I think doing time tests in math classes is a dumb policy. Math is not about fast thinking. It's about slow, deep, deliberate thinking. And a lot of times in-class tests result in the belief that math is all about procedures, which it's not. So I find that the need for calculation, it is good to know how to calculate, but there shouldn't be any time associated with it, which is why in my classes that I don't do time tests, because I don't think time tests measure learning. I think they're methods of dominating and controlling uh, student populations. I, I'll talk more about that in other videos on my channel. But for now, what we're going to do is actually add these two things together. So negative 15 plus 8 is negative 7. Negative 5 plus 14 is 9. 0 plus 2 is 2, 10 minus 10 is 0, and then we're going to combine these together. So, uh, of course, I didn't touch this here, and that's the idea that when I'm doing math by hand, I don't want to make a stupid mistake, so I might as well just track it. It takes a few extra seconds. Negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1, 9 minus 12 is negative 3, 2 minus 4 is negative 2, and 0 plus 4 is 4. So my claim is that this is now my vector b which we said was equal to a times x, right? This is a 4 by 1, which is exactly what we expected since x, uh, a was a 4 by 3 and x was a 3 by 1, which means this vector would be a 4 by 1. Um, and what we've just shown is that using this version of matrix column vector multiplication using linear combinations, a times x is b, and this is the value of b. Once again, we are constructing the entire vector b in one shot. So we're thinking about the fundamental unit or chunk of information, not as individual entries, but as vectorized information. So the entire vector b is equal to the linear combinations of the columns of a with scalar multiples from the individual entries of x. So in this form, the information is vectorized. It's not scalarized. It's not individual scalars. It's entire vectors. I can't help myself. We have a guess for what we think the answer is, but one of my habits as a teacher is to help students develop great problem-solving skills. And I'm going to go ahead and call out, um, if you go to my appliedlinearalgebra.com, www.appliedlinearalgebra.com, and then click on blog, over on the side here, you're going to see a list of resources. And if you go down to uh, Jeff Anderson math blog posts, I just did a blog post. Um, it's number 19 on this list. It was published Friday, October 8th. If you click on that, this is going to be a list of problem solving questions that I claim you can use to solve any, almost any problem that you might want. You can watch a video on it. You can read this entire thing. What I wanted to do is to move down. We've actually already done steps one, two, and three, and we're now on step four. 
most folks might think, okay, we're done with this problem, no, no issue, but I wanna actually push this a little bit deeper. Once we get a proposed solution, we, I wanna go and look back. I wanna check our results and check our algorithm and maybe even do it in a different way. This gets into one of my beliefs about doing math, which is it's good to be able to do a particular problem in many different ways. So when we look back on this, here we did this by hand. Let's actually use some computer uh, calculator, which is Octave Online. Octave is a free version of MATLAB. Let's go here and click on this. And then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna calculate the same output using this. So uh, we're gonna enter this data. So it's negative three comma. So every column is delimited by a comma and every row is delimited by a semicolon. So four comma negative three semicolon. So this tells Octave, the first row is negative three, then the next entry is four, then the next entry is negative three. Go down, so little semicolon means go down to the next row. So first thing I do is negative one, comma seven comma six go down to the next row which is semicolon zero comma one comma two semicolon and then also two comma negative five comma negative two and let's go ahead and push enter and then we'll check uh, negative three negative one zero two four seven one negative five negative three six two negative two okay let's go ahead and check x and we'll go uh, x was five semicolon down to the next row, two semicolon down to the next row, negative two. And then we'll say b is equal to a times x. Lo and behold, check it out, the thing that I did by hand matches the value that I have here. So now I'm a little bit more confident that I didn't make some silly arithmetic error up here. And notice these are two different ways to check the same output. One of them is using the definition, one of them is using a calculator. This makes me feel like, okay, I'm doing, doing pretty well here, right? We're gonna use Octave later in this class. Uh, this is actually the same code that we would write if we wanted to do this in MATLAB. What's really nice about Octave, it's kind of the free version of MATLAB, which is exciting. And there's an online version for no cost. Um, going back here, so we did check our results. We haven't necessarily checked our algorithm because this is a, um, a just a definition. We can result, uh, derive the results differently. In fact, that's what we're gonna be doing in the next videos. Um, what I wanted to do is just spend a little bit of time describing the work that we did in Abuelita language. This is a, a property of good math thinking. Once we've solved a problem, spend a little bit of extra time recapping what we've done so that we can really solidify that in our minds. So remember, in this example, we were using the matrix column vector product. A was what we call the given modeling matrix. So we were thinking about A as a matrix that arised in modeling. In our case, this thing fell from the sky, which is really stupid. I, I hate to just give students integer matrices. Never in life are you gonna like walk into like a 7-Eleven, go up to the counter and they're just gonna give you a matrix. Usually to get a good matrix is gonna require months, if not wor uh, years of, of actual engineering and thinking and deep uh, reflection. But in order to get our head around the operation, I'm, I gave you these. So we call this thing the modeling matrix. In this case, we were gonna do algebraic work on the modeling matrix by multiplying that ve uh, matrix on the right-hand side. So the left factor was a modeling matrix, the right factor was the algebraic worker. In the matrix column vector product via linear combinations, we're gonna chop the left one into columns and then scale each columns by the individual entries of X to produce the linear combination, which is B. So when modeling shows up on the left and algebraic worker shows up on the right, we chop the left into columns. This is a theme that shows up and that's exactly what we did. All right, community challenge to get you ready for the next videos. How might you do this operation differently? What other operation, and the hint is dot product, this was from our last video, how would you use a dot product rather than linear combinations to calculate the entries of B? We'll see the answer to that in our next video.